This is a video overview of CIS 1400 Windows Operating System Fundamentals. Chapter 1, Overview of the Windows Operating Systems. So in this chapter, we're going to be looking at the history of Windows, understanding the OS architecture and under identifying Windows interfaces. We'll be looking at DOS, or the system, and the Windows evolution. So DOS, the precursor to where we are now, was primarily used for loading applications and managing files on disk. Uh, had no built-in GUI, also pronounced GUI, which stands for Graphical User Interface, other than ASCII graphics. It was popular from 81 to 99 and still has an impact on our command prompt in Windows today. Here's what the command prompt looked like in DOS. We can see the command prompt C colon backslash DOS greater than, which is issuing a command check disk space C colon, which checks the hard drive for errors. That same command issued with the ASCII graphics looks like this. So a little bit different than the functionality and what it provided as feedback. A lot better there. Then Windows 3.1 came out, which was the most popular graphical user interface out by Microsoft. was uh, first uh, adopted in large scale within companies, provided window and graphics functions for applications, and ran on top of DOS. Here's what the interface looked like. You can see I had something called Program Manager where your programs were uh, were located. You could double click on them to fire them up and here they have File Manager open viewing the contents of their hard drive. Windows 95 came on. It was still based on DOS just like 3.1 uh, but it was a vast improvement over the graphical user interface and we can see still how Windows uh, 95 has an influence on Windows 7 today. Here you can see the uh, Windows 95 interface and uh, the interface is, we can still see it has a start button here and uh, as well as a, a taskbar notification area and uh, as uh, the taskbar and notification area and you can launch programs by clicking on the start button. Windows NT was Microsoft's uh, uh, file server or server operating system. Uh, the first version uh, looked like Windows 3.1. When Windows 95 came out, they updated the uh, server op uh, operating system to look like Windows 95. They called it Windows NT 4.0. It did not depend on DOS to start the operating system. Here's where we're at today, Windows 7 Arrow Interface. If you hold the Windows key down and push the tab button, you can navigate between applications that you have open on your desktop by uh, just continuing to hit the tab button and let go of the tab button when you want to select the program that you want. We're still affected by the past and the present. There's been backward compatibility through uh, all this process, and there's an interesting video you can watch on YouTube called Chain of Fools upgrading through every version of Windows. I also provided a link on D2L. You can check that out. But here's the evolution from 81 to 91. We had DOS and had very few graphics capabilities other than ASCII capabilities. Some of you may, may remember games like Doom or Doom 2 or something like that that you might have played. Uh, very little bit of RAM. Uh, I remember my first laptop which ran on DOS had like four kilobytes of RAM and had no hard drive. Windows 3.1 came out and uh, I needed a bigger computer so I needed a 386 processor with 4 megabytes of RAM. I think I had a 30 megabyte hard drive. So uh, <clears throat> Windows 95 came out and I needed another new computer and had more capabilities, 32-bit processing. It was 16-bit on, on 3.1 and DOS was 8-bit for the most part. And uh, Windows 3.1, I got my first CD-ROM drive. It was a cost me $500 for a one-speed CD-ROM drive that, and came with a sound card and a game. So uh, Windows 2000 came out after 95, used uh, for security and stability within enterprise applications. And it's amazing that there's still companies that run Windows 2000 today. A couple of versions, they had enterprise and pro versions there of Windows 2000. And they also had Windows 2000 Server. So in 95, the server version was called NT. Uh, when Windows uh, 2000 came out, they had a server version and a desktop version. Uh, Windows XP came out. Uh, well, before that, Windows 98 came out. Don't forget 98. And uh, ME was out before that as well. Uh, but Windows XP uh, came out and has been used uh, for a long time now. And, uh, 
businesses and still continue to be used in a lot of businesses. And Windows 7 now has been out since 2009. So what in the world happened to Vista? Well, Vista was kind of ahead of its time, so the hardware was not able to keep up with it. Many have said that uh, Windows 7 is Windows Vista as it should have been when it was first released, but that has to do with because with Windows 7 now we have a lot better hardware, faster and more capable. Let's look at the OS architecture. There's, we'll look at the layers and compare it with other operating systems. Here's the basic architecture that you're going to find within uh, Windows 7. You can see there's a separation point in the middle between user and kernel mode. Uh, in kernel mode you have things like your device drivers and your hardware abstraction layer and windows and graphics functions following underneath there that tie into the hardware things like your graphics card your ram your uh, processor your hard drive all is accessed at the kernel mode so we don't want applications and users to be able to get there so we have this separation there's something down there called the hardware abstraction layer. If you've ever seen the movie Space Odyssey 2001, you might remember the HAL 9000 computers with, computer, which killed everybody on the space station. But no, it doesn't do that here. It's supposed to protect us. You may remember some previous operating systems. You might have gotten something called a blue screen of death, uh, which occurred a lot of times when you, an application got access down to your hardware. And so we want to be able to separate that out so we have less... Uh, instability within a system by separating it out the user functions and user applications from the uh, hardware itself and that's where that separation between un user and kernel mode comes so ring 0 and ring 3 ring 0 is the kernel mode that's a lower level that's going to provide direct access to the hardware we want to prevent applications and users from getting there so we put them up in ring 3 to keep them away from there Here's the architecture components you find in Windows 7, uh, and uh, you can find out more information on these in your textbook by looking at pages 10 through 12, and it gives you a description of each one of these. But there's changes in architecture in Windows 7. Uh, the version of Windows 7 now, if you pull up command prompt, you can see it's version 6.1. It's uh, lighter weight, more reductions in the code, uh, more efficient, faster with uh, desktop graphics, etc., better power management support for BitLocker which is a drive encryption technology and you can use BitLocker now to encrypt the flash drives as well and you can also boot from a virtual hard drive in Windows 7. So if you compare Windows with other operating systems for instance Linux, Linux is more like uh, Windows 3.1 in that the operating system is separate from the uh, graphical interface in fact, on Linux, you can change the graphical interface to many different versions that you can run on it. But in Windows, the graphics are built right into the operating system, so you're stuck there. Mac OS uh, is based on the BSD Linux or Unix distribution, and uh, you can find out more about that at www.puredarwin.org. So now we're going to look at the graphical user interface command prompt and the PowerShell. Here's the graphical user interface in Windows 7 as we see it today. You can see the start button is not there any longer. We have this Windows orb. Most people still call it the start button. And you can click on that to launch programs and applications. That Windows orb is found on something called the taskbar. And to the far right of the taskbar, you can see that's a notification area where the <clears throat> excuse me, the clock and the calendar is located, and then you have the desktop as well. You can customize the look and feel of this by right-clicking on it, go to properties, and you can adjust how it looks to you. Looking at standard applications within Windows, we can see at the top is our title bar. This title is called Untitled Notepad. To the right of that, you can see the underline, which minimizes. You see a box, which maximizes, and a red X, which closes the application. We have uh, the File, Edit, Format, View, and Help menu options. If you click on those, there's sub-menus that come open there that you can open and perform functions. But most applications have this type of a look and feel to them within Windows 7 today. There's keyboard shortcuts you can use in Windows. One of those is the Windows Up Arrow, which maximizes your window. A Windows Down Arrow, which minimizes your window. And the Alt F4, which closes a window. That one's been around for a long time. Maybe you have a f favorite keyboard shortcut you'd like to use. Why don't you post a comment here on uh, YouTube and uh, let everybody else know what your favorite keyboard shortcut is. 
using the command prompt in Windows 7 here you can see at the top the title bar it's uh, the command we're running is cmd.exe that's the command prompt it used to be command.com now it's cmd.exe underneath there you can see Microsoft Windows version 6.1.7600 that's the version of Windows 7 that we're looking at right now and the prompt reads c colon backslash users backslash tom greater than so we're looking at a users uh, directory by the name of Tom and if you type dir there and hit enter you can see a directory listing of all the files and folders located in that uh, particular directory if you do a cd backslash windows and enter that will bring you to the windows directory and you can type dir there and you can see all the files and folders that are located in that directory if you type exit it will bring you out of the command prompt here we're looking at the Windows PowerShell. Windows PowerShell is uh, new uh, to uh, Windows 7 and gives us the greater expanded uh, list of commands that we can run. It gives us the ability to manage, maintain, and remotely administer uh, machines and also script in some of these changes automatically. But it still uses uh, the base function, uh, base commands within DOS. So you can try out DIR and CD and type exit in there to get out of there. But you can launch the PowerShell by going to Start All Programs Accessories Windows PowerShell. There you go, Chapter 1, Little Summary, Discovering the History of Windows, Understanding the OS Architecture, and Identifying Windows Interfaces. Don't forget to write your one-page summary after you read the chapter and post it to the Dropbox.